Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on our in-person and on Facebook Live. We will now be conducting the regular Sunday service at Edna Matsuoka. Please join us in prayer. Okay. 
We lift our eyes in love, our head is going above. We lift our eyes in love, our head is going above. We lie in the deep prayer for our perfect and deep. And we ask the gifts of how we pray to be, how we be a great holy heart. We should not be a beautiful woman that does not stop for a single day. The protection of the divine here to break this all black and white. The blessings of coming flow out of the world to all generations. The ways of coming are mysterious and wondrous beyond our understanding. Day by day, every day, we day, mercy and reverently, we praise the virtues of how we are in our lives.
someone wants me to talk today. It's like the the cutting of the gas on it. I'm going to wear this mic on anyway. So uh, I say that whatever I say today is, is within uh, kind of some of my thoughts too. <laughs> but anyways, um, my mom, Benko Sensei, she's not here today. She's at the Kunko Mission of Kunku. She's attending the 24th memorial service for the late Reverend Kikue Kodama Sensei. And I don't know if you remember Kodama Sensei, but she was a really tiny, really tiny petite uh, female sensei. And I remember her as a child uh, when I used to dance Kimi Mai, uh, the sacred Kimi Mai dance. Uh, she would always praise me and she said, wow, you did a really good job. Even though there are some people that said, oh, not no good today. You could have done better. She always said, you did a good job. And with that smile. And I always remember her uh, when we go to Honolulu Church, when we were really tiny kids, she would give us some candy, she would give us some juices, and that really... It would warm my heart, you know. I, when I was a little, I didn't go to Honolulu Church for faith. I went there because of the candy and the juice, but that eventually led to the faith, you know. And I really appreciate Kodama Kiko Sensei. Uh, I think, I believe she had six children. And during World War II, um, you know how all the leaders of Hawaii and even in the mainland, they were um, arrested. And they were taken to the, like, the internment camps. So uh, Reverend Masayuki Kodama, the head minister of the Commission of Honolulu, he was also arrested uh, at the start of World War II, and he was taken to the internment camps. And after the war was over, he was given a choice. Um, the headquarters told him, "Go back to you can go back to Japan." Um, and he, would, he even told his wife, "You want to go back to Japan already? Like just give up the paper and just go back." And head on home, head on home to, um, to Japan. But Kikuya Sensei, during the war, she watched her six children, and you know, in extreme stress and poverty too, and taking care of like even one kid it might be too hard. But for her, she had to take care of six children during the war. Now, and there was so much discrimination from the Japanese people, but. When she was asked that question by her husband, hey, you want to go back to Japan with me? She was like, uh-uh, I'm not going to go back. I'm going to stay right here because there are so many members, right? She's not going to abandon me. She said, I'm not going to abandon these people. I'm going to stay here. So that's why uh, the husband was like, okay, okay, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> Had Kikua Sensei said, okay, you know what? Forget this already. This is too hard. This is too crazy. I was in a crazy situation. I want to go back with you to Japan. Then, Kondo Kyo wouldn't have spread. It would have just shut down already from there. So, really, um, Kikura Sensei's contributions to the Kondo faith in Hawaii were so tremendous. She went through so much sacrifices um, just because of her great love to the people of Hawaii. So, I really want to thank her. So, my mom is half of the church quicker than me. Okay. Anyway, I want to talk about part two of what I talked about last week. Uh, I don't know if you remember what I talked about last week, but I talked about how I threw out my back uh, when I was at the pet shop volunteering, right? And I was experiencing extreme lower back pain uh, that even sitting or standing or just sitting, like standing still was really, really painful. Even taking a few steps was just so painful. And I realized that it happened on the day of my grandmother's memorial day, the day she passed away, November 17th, and it was Hawaii time. Uh, and she passed away back in 2016, and I have a picture of my household altar. I have it there. And I even have the date of her passing uh, marked right below her picture. Yet I'm so shameful for not realizing, for not remembering the memorial. It is a fifth, a special memorial, the fifth memorial. And it's like she was trying, not trying to scold me, but it's like trying to remind me. Uh, like, hey, uh, can you remember? Well, anytime something unusual happens, it is a reminder for coming someone or that they become a spirit. Of some kind of irreverence that I may have committed, or, or like a missed memorial 
things I might have known or not known also. Sometimes these reminders are subtle. Sometimes they're very painful. But they're apparent reminders for us. Uh, it's, a, it's important to notice them as our attention getters. Yeah, some people, they might fall down or things might slip out of our hand. And we're like, huh, oh, that's it. Why is it happening? Or like it happens like one, two, three, even four times. What is Kami Sama trying to tell me? What is Kami Sama trying to tell us? We have to try to figure that out. Grandma Nobuku has been our greatest support for the Yano family. No one else in the Yano family prayed as hard as her, uh, especially for the Hawaii family. Her spirit continues to watch over us, uh, yet we have forgotten favors of remembering her. So the consequences were not irrational. We realized we have forgotten her memorial day and we remembered only a few days after it had passed. A good thing we realized it and took action. Right after the memorial service we had last week Sunday, um, my mom bought a flower lay. That's when she remembered, right? <laughs> so she bought a flower lay and we had a small separate service to honor her Mitama spirit. And I also took out her uh, the koto that she gave me, the, you know, the koto in the back over there. Uh, it's a 13-string zither, it's an instrument, uh, and I crafted a few songs that I learned in the Gaku in Seminary. The koto was from my grandmother, uh, Nobuko, uh, from Shikoku. It cost about $500 to have it shipped to here. Uh, my dad went to Japan one day and then uh, he, he took it with him as cargo, but it cost $500. Like, oh, that's really expensive, but uh, it's so priceless. My, mom, my grandmother used to pay the photo at the Kalama Mission Church in the services. And, but, you know, she was in a care home now, and no one was paying the photo, so um, she gave it to me. I'm really honored. It's really old, but it sounds beautiful. But I'm thankful for my grandma. Uh, she was a very kind person. So mellow. Uh, I remember her the toman cookies that she used to make, uh, the umeboshi, the miso, the homemade miso, and she used to give us that from time to time when we visited Japan. And she would always call me Kazuchan, 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 and, and you know I really I really loved her. And the last time I saw Grandma Nobuko was when Clayton and I, my and I, flew to Japan for our honeymoon. Uh, back in 2016. She was at the care home, and you know, it's so strange, it's as if she was waiting for us, you know. Just one month after we visited her, she passed away. And even my auntie was like, wow, she must have been waiting for you. Uh, we were so far away. I mean, we live in Hawaii, but she lives in Japan. But I think I was most closest to Grandma Nobuko. And so I really don't know how we forgot this very important day of her passing. The day she became a uh, Mitama no Kami. I made sure to mark it on my calendar so I can be reminded every year. I don't know why it wasn't in my silver calendar to remind me. My grandparents, my grandpa's uh, memorial services on my calendar, so I didn't forget. But I didn't know why my grandma was in on it. Everyone has ancestors that need to be acknowledged and remembered. So the least we can do is to memorialize our immediate family members, at least our immediate family members, and if you can, your grandparents too. Another reminder uh, incident that happened very recently was um, I was making some homemade pasta with the pasta machine. <laughs> and when I was putting the noodle, the noodle go into the machine, my thumb got caught on the blade. <laughs> and I thought my finger fell off. I mean, it was so painful. And thank goodness that the blades were made of hard plastic and not metal, because if they were made of metal, guarantee my finger would not be here. <laughs> it would be cut off. Uh, you know, I'll sure my finger broke because it, it was throbbing. My finger was throbbing. Just like the cartoon, they show like the big stomach. <laughs> and it, it began to get numb afterwards. I was like, oh no, numbness is not a good thing. So I was like, oh no, it's probably broken. But thank goodness. It's still okay and it's well known. 
And um, but anyway, since it was so painful, and I consider it an unusual occurrence, you know, I know, like, what is the meaning behind this? What's going on? First, I turn my back, now it's my thumb. What is these? What are these reminders? <clears throat> And then I realized what it was. So it was Kami Sama trying to tell me that there was a, a pot of cooked rice in a little rice pot and we had forgotten that there was some rice in there. And it was like those, you know, one the one cup rice cookers, it was really tiny. It has uh, it doesn't have a transparent lid, so you don't know if there's rice in there, it's just closed. But then um uh, really a couple days after my my thumb thinking. Clayton says, uh, Edna? And I was like, yeah. He's like, wow, I didn't realize that we left rice in here. I was like, what? Like, I, I'm the very person that doesn't want to throw away rice that is really careful of trying not to even throw away one grain of rice, but man, there was probably a thousand grains of rice in there. <laughs> and it was all black, and rotten, molded. And I was like, oh no, that was so bad, you know? And ironically, that, that pot of rice was right right in back of the, the pasta machine that I was making. So it was almost like coming to someone saying, hello, I have some running rice over here, please notice, notice me, notice, but I didn't. And only when they told me that, I thought that, that's probably the reason why I, I caught my finger in the blade. I'm just, I was trying to, Maybe notice and irreverence. So, I never meant to spoil rice or let rice spoil. I was really sad and felt bad for having to throw it away. Um, so we apologize. <clears throat> and it's because of our carelessness and forgetfulness that this happened. And people may talk about like bad juju, or like the Murphy's Law. And, but I believe there's always a cause and result. And when unusual things happen around you, try to notice it. Try to look into your heart and feel the energy that's coming out of your heart. Is it good? Is it negative? And try to really find the meaning behind what's going on. What have we forgotten? Or where have we gone wrong? And sometimes, these unusual occurrences, they happen because kami is just trying to protect you. Just trying to make it a, a blessing in this guy. Just like how my brother mentioned in his last sermon, his friend had that skateboard accident like two years ago, and he hit his head really bad, he had a major concussion, and um, he had a bleeding going on, and so they had to open him up to get to relieve the pressure. And it was thankfully because of that accident, you know, we don't want to get into accidents, but it's because of that accident that they realized, the doctors realized that he had a tumor in his brain. So had they, had he not gotten into that accident, he would have never known about a tumor slowly growing in his head. And he, he, he thankfully um, got the, the surgery to get the tumor out. But anyways, so some things are blessings in these guys as well. And we never know when certain things are like, wow, if, you, if I look back, you know, although it was a really terrible thing that happened, it was a really great blessing that that did happen. Otherwise, we would not be here where we are right now. So we always have to try to appreciate and try to find the meanings of why things happen. And when you find, find out what it is, be thankful and try to correct yourselves immediately. We strive, we have to strive to become a better person each and every day. Even when we get older, there's always room for improvement, always room for becoming a better person. The practicing faith is also inclusive of finding why certain, certain things happen and trying to correct our actions or where we may have come from. So, that was just a, a really good lesson for me. And I hope uh, everyone else can learn from that too. Thank you very much.
もうついてるよ。うん、ついてるね。うん。やめとこう、ごめんね。Good morning, thank you for the entry service. As I listen to Abe's sense of speech, I remember the Kodama sense of this. I think she died 24 years ago in Japan, but he was, she was children in Japan. And her body was transported to Hawaii. She, yeah, 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 she was very kind. Thoroughly used her mind in very detailed terms. The first thing she came over here after we arrived here was to conduct the annual removal service. And she was the head minister, or no, she served as the chief service web at the removal service. That was the first. And she ever came over here and conduct the service while we were here. And at that time, only several people were in attendance. So the service was held in the afternoon, several, after 7 30. And only Takahashi、uh, family member and all was attending. Anyway, if、uh, Kodama sensei said, I want to go back to Japan. This is my husband was retained by the authority in the mainland. And actually, she asked the third Konko Sama, this Konko Sama, whether she could go back to Japan or not. The Konko Sama said, You can come back to Hawaii, to, J- to Japan. But she rejected the idea to stay in Hawaii. If she were Uh, she went back to Japan, maybe the k o n k o m i s s i o n in Hawaii would not be exist today. Like the founder of the, this church,、uh, Takahashi Sensei, after she was detained at the Sun Island in Honolulu Camp in Hawaii, about three years. And she said, I don't want to continue the operation of the church. To stop the operation, which is this child would not stop, I would not expect. After she was released from the、uh, Honolulu camp, she went back to Honolulu church yesterday and she began、uh, to start、uh, mission work here in 1948. And we are yesterday, so 81 years later. <coughs> As for my mother,、uh, no, of course.、Uh, she passed away at the age of 92. She lived a full thing life. She had raised eight children five boys and three girls. And every time, actually, seven or seven、uh, are out of town and everything to Kyoto, Tokyo, or some of them. Places, oh, this is a other places. Every time the church,、uh, family,、uh, the children go to school, for the reason, and reason, she accompanied us to the place of residence over there. And she tried to find out Hong Kong church near and introduced us to the sense. And we have to go to church every day. <laughs> This is a hard man to make up my time. She spent so much time, money, and energy to guide us to get engaged in Hong Kong church. And that may be the reason why every single children have engaged the Hong Kong church. So, in one sense, it can be, she can be a very forsaken. Too much of revolt in personal lives for children. But I really appreciate her.、Uh, If she were not there, we may not have been a home to believe. Let me introduce our message.
When I was young, maybe um, as I went to a school to, to the age, the Red Minister of the Congo Church, I used to attend with my family members, namely Congo Church of Kawano Shinyehime, Japan. You should say in his song, Hamisama reminds you any needed teachings that would help you in any conditions. I still remember his message every day. His message showed the importance of exposing yourself to the teachings of the founder of Congo religion as Congo believers. Whatever our teaching we would have absorbed through our involvement in Congo practice, we would remain, retain the message somewhere in the brain, in the heart. But sometimes we can retrieve but one sensei has uh, explained no what what elements or like teachings, messages could be stored somewhere in my brain, somewhere in the heart. But sometimes we just could not retrieve it. Any information we saw here could be in the brain. It cannot be erased. Anyway, the message you hear from your ministers, the books you read, from the recorded uh, voice messages, and so on, would have been stored somewhere in your brain. I have been saying to the congregation that it is important to expose yourself to the teachings of the founder through their involvement in the Hong Kong office practice. In the last five year and a half, Yes, we are being under the condition of coronavirus. Now we're trying to come to church and have this occasion to be to get involved in first the teaching of Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Both my wife and I have served at the Hong Kong Church of uh, this church for uh, maybe 45 years. Sometimes I wonder if I could have helped our church member to get exposed to the teachings of the founder enough. Would they be able to refer to any important messages that they help them to deal with any basic issues they have to cope with? Personally, I have triggered the message given by the fourth Hong Kong Summer, the great Reverend Kalami Taro Hong Kong. Ever since both my wife and I met him at the tourist immigration desk at the head of the church, on the way we came to Hawaii for our missionary work. At that time, Kongo Sano gave us some what, long story at the tourism mediation place. But I would be able to remember all, I would remember only portion of the message. One of them is the message about the thought of inoji no shin no uh, That can be translated into a, a vital uh, function that could be found in any living animals. It simply read a story about the birth of a child. We exchange, we exchange congratulatory greetings among gozy ready people by saying, Onyeta Olaimas, congratulations. And Arigato Olaimas, thank you. Great for this occasion. The same function can be found in the trees and plants in the yards. The tree makes food for the roots and then back all the way. And the uh, leaves also make uh, nutrients for the lights and light, uh, light, lights of the sun. Um, this function of the tree can be found in any living condition, living thing. We can keep repeating this vital function as human beings. We may encounter some difficulties in life. It can be like, like cutting a tree off from the roots. The tree would so well and die eventually. So, take good care of your children. What's the message for the Kong Kong Sun? The message was received uh, about 45 years ago and one of the most significant messages I have ever trained. Lot of my missionary 
。ありがとうございます。すごくやりました。David? 192. Honko Daijin said, Do not hesitate to go and worship during rain or strong winds. To endure this hardship is training to receive virtue. You should not concentrate on following formalities in the things you do. No matter how diligently you may recite the words of prayer, it is equal to telling lies to Kami unless you do it with a truly sincere heart. When you worship, you need not clap your hands loudly. Kami can hear even a small song. When you pray, you do not have to do it loudly or in a peculiar intonation. Pray as you will talk to others. Okay. <coughs> Take 193. Tenchi Kane no Kami is a theme in every Hiromai, but if you forget the origin of the blessings you have received and worship somewhere only because it is nearby and convenient, you will not receive divine blessings. You will only gain convenience. <coughs> you should receive divine virtues since Konko Daijin said Tenchi Kai no Kami is apparent Kami If you have sincerity in your heart you can receive divine blessings fully even by praying to a wall or a post in your house Kami is the same in every Hiramai so Kami may be worshipped anywhere as well as at this Hiramai Sometimes people receive divine blessings at one Hiramai but not at another This is because the divine virtue differs between Torizugi mediators at the different Hiromai. When you are serving as a Torizugi mediator at a Hiromai, you should not get up late. Rising late will affect the time that people come for prayer. Okay. 195. <coughs> Uncle Daijin said, People think of the Torogusi mediator as Kami. As proof of this, they will say that Uncle Daijin is absent when the mediator is absent. Those who serve at a hero mai and receive Kami's virtue should be attentive to all details. Always keep your heart in good order. When it comes to people, there is no such thing as superior or inferior. All people are Kami's children. You must not look down on a dis- or discriminate against others. When those who don't have virtue have authority, people become afraid. However, As they gain virtue, people start to respect them naturally. Right. 196. There was an acquaintance of mine who had devout faith but hadn't visited the Hiramai for a long time. I thought he had stopped practicing faith, but one day while thinking about this, his friend came to my Hiramai and gave me a message from him. It said, When I am able to talk about positive things so that Konkon Sama, referring to Kata Oka Diroshiro, will be happy, I will come to worship. Hearing this, I told his friend, if he feels he has nothing positive to talk about, he should come to pray to receive divine blessings, become able to talk about positive things, 
and give thanks sooner. There is nothing I can do for him unless he changes his mind about coming here. Two, why is it that I sit here? I sit here so that I may hear all of your requests and convey the blessings of Kami. If you do not come to worship, there will be no divine blessings. If you act as a stranger to me, you will not receive divine blessings, or you will not receive blessings. Um, 197. Kamsa Daini says the dog would not be beaten, but nor it's growing up. If you receive true divine virtue, people will naturally come to visit you even though you just sit still. Do not strain yourself for, for the right time. Since each person has a different way of receiving divine virtue, just understanding what it is that you are receiving is fine. However, if you are a teacher, you should not try to teach your disciples everything. If you teach everything, you will be the same as them. The last lesson is one which each individual must make the effort to find within himself. There is a saying that one should read a blank paper with one's own mind. This is what I mean. と。1番と。1番。新人のエイコ。1番。お、親神に言うだしのままに。親神をまた歌うと。Are we still singing that? 新人のエイコ number 1. Louder, louder, louder. Okay, that's good. Shinjin no echo.
down and ready to surrender when times are hard and it seems so dark this knowing each day that I'm never on my own gives me strength and courage to try harder holding hands with my friends standing by my side singing on Hey, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we hope you have a brand a good brand new week. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care.